like training podcast where we talk about golf because it's still there. golf learning golf psychology the golf swing pj tour college golf and all things golf on this show we're talking about some of the most common things going on in the golfing world and we share our beliefs and insights on the golf industry which has really come from being in this industry for over a decade we try to bring on as many top quality coaches, world renowned academics and pioneering professors from different domains that can really help the industry and help coaches coach better and also help players play better. Hi, I'm one of your hosts, Eric Zeigel. And I'm your co-host, Matthew Cook, switching roles today with Eric Zeigel. And uh, I'm excited for who's coming on today. Uh, I'm going to learn a lot about statistics that I probably should know more of, uh, but Eric, why don't you go ahead and introduce our awesome guest? Yeah, so today we have Thomas Peterson. Thomas, thanks for joining us. Um, Thomas works for Innova Golf. They are a stats company. Um, I've been fortunate to use your software for about two years now with players and absolutely love it. Um, so, Thomas, why don't you give us a little background on on the company? You shared a story with me when we first spoke. Um I'd love for you to share that that story because I've actually told Matthew a little bit about it. Um, so maybe we start with that. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show. Uh, yeah, so uh, I I have a background in professional golf. I played pro golf for over 10 years on uh, a reasonably high level. I played a couple of events on the European Tour. I played in Australia and in Asia. Uh, but in 2013, it became very clear that I'd hit a performance plateau and I was trying to figure out a way to break through that plateau. And I talked to coaches, I used other statistical software, and um, um, a long process of trying to learn and trying to talk to as many people as possible, I finally realized that I didn't have enough information to actually be able to answer that question. Uh, I would talk to coaches, but not being able to give them enough information for them to use their expertise to help me was super frustrating. Mm -hmm. So uh, I ended up getting to a point where I knew exactly the information I wanted, but uh, it wasn't available for players on the tours that I was playing at. And also, if you're on the PGA Tour, you pretty much need a full-time statistician to be able to break break out the actual data points and what you can do about them. So in 2016, I decided to build this um, uh, platform in order to be able to answer my own performance question. And it was really cool because um, what the results ended up saying was that what I thought was my biggest strength ended up being my biggest weakness. And that just goes to show how different you can perceive something from happening than what is actually happening. Um, in terms of golf, it's really quite difficult to be objective about analyzing your own performance because it's difficult to compare it to somebody because they're on some another part of the course. So you end up building uh, expectations based on a bunch of things like the people you play against, what you see on TV, and that may or may not be close to what is actually going on. And in my case, it was completely different. So uh, yeah, in short, I, I'd always thought I was a good ball striker. So I was always trying to maximize and optimize for that. But statistically, that was the part of the game where I had the biggest opportunity to improve. And that was super interesting. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, cause I, I, I think that that's kind of a perfect opening for where I wanted to take this conversation today. Um, because, you know, we, we, we did a previous podcast with another coach named Chad Phillips. Um, I think you said you, you listened to that one and yeah. we were just talking about kind of the value of stats from a coach's perspective and, and why it can be so important. And that was one of the points I think Chad brought up was, you know, as a coach, players aren't always capable or able to give you as much insight to their game as as you might like and it's not as um uh concrete as you know what the stats might say they might think they're great at one thing and they might actually be terrible at it <laughs> it's pretty lame actually isn't it when you sometimes when you're talking to a player you're like so so what do you struggle with and it's like i i, I don't haul anything inside six foot like, really or like do you actually know well, I, I suck with my seven iron i suck from 100 yards really like yeah <laughs> it, it, it's 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 almost a pointless question really and yeah as a coach don't even ask it because what you're getting back is is most likely so incorrect that it's a joke yeah 
Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, uh, and and in and in my case, I ended up being on the road a lot. Uh, some years, up to ten months a year, just on the road, and I never had my coaches with me. So I was in that position where I was trying to explain what was going on. Uh, but even though uh, I feel like I'm a reasonably analytical person, I wasn't able to, in a concrete enough way, explain what was going on to my coaches so that they then could help me. Uh, and that was very frustrating. So that was, uh, yeah, another part of why I wanted to build this platform was so that a coach that would be half a world away would be able to see the next best thing to being there live. And pretty much see the see the course and see the see the way you plot your way around the course uh, from their own house or office. Right. So so you've been at it since 2015. You said uh, 2016 development started and the launch happened uh, just before Christmas 2016. Okay. Can I ask just before you get into it, really? Can I ask a question? What is an overgolf? Yep. So it's a uh, it's a way to measure your on course performance in extreme detail. So uh, basically, what we're trying to do is quantify what exactly it is that you're doing on the course, so that you can then work with your coaches, your mental mental coach, your your um, trainer, your golf coach, swing coach, putting coach, whatever you have on your team so that they're all on the same page so that you can create a better practice regimen that is optimizing for on-course performance. Um, and that is, that, is, that is the key, in my opinion. Uh, if you're a uh, tournament player with goals to be a person that plays well on the course, then on-course performance needs to be at the top of the pyramid. So everything you do needs to be about that. So what ANOVA is, is a way to measure that so that you can then have a better conversation with your coaches about your improvement. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I think that's an incredible way to answer, answer that question because that's exactly kind of going into the next question. You know, how, how do you currently see stats being used in the game? Um, and, and how do you think they can be utilized better? I think is is a is a good question to start with. Yep. Yeah, so I what we see here is that there there is still a lot of what we would say traditional golf stats being thrown around and and they're not inherently bad. It's just very difficult to know what the output means. Uh, just a few quick examples: you can hit a pitching wedge from the tee and hit the fairway, or you can hit a three hundred yard drive and hit the fairway, and they're both worth the same. They're both a fairway hit. And on the other side of the coin, you can miss the fairway by one inch or hit it out of bounds. And they're both worth the same, and that's a missed fairway. So uh, it's really quite difficult to know what those numbers mean. Um, and what we're seeing is uh, still a little bit of a um, um, hesitation to go away from that because those are really easy to measure when you're on the course. It's quite easy to teach somebody to, to, to count putts and to count greens hit. Um, strokes gain, on the other hand, is a very good methodology, but they're pretty much impossible to have any sort of understanding of if you did something well or not, because it's a mathematical concept and it, it's not super easy to, to know what to do with. So, so th therein lies the, lies the balance. And in general, using both in a way with, where you probably use more strokes gained and that sort of type of variables as your primary source of information. And then you, you dig deeper as you're peeling down the layers of somebody's golf game with all kinds of different other stats like green set, because they do tell a big part of the story when put in the right perspective. I agree. I have, I, I don't, I, I, because I've never used it, I don't really know like what the platform looks like or what it displays and how it displays things. Can you, so I'm a, like completely new to it. Can you just <laughs> yep. tell me, I, mean, I I love the concept. I like how you say, you know, strokes gained is this, and it is quite difficult to understand uh, to, for someone that would be new to it anyway, it would be quite yep. difficult because like you said, it's a mathematical concept and I guess you can't just work it out on the course there and then what, you know, what what you did and how it, if it was helpful or not um, but a better thing to look at rather than looking at I hit this many greens in regulation because that's just bullshit you know so I, I get where, where you're coming from but can you tell me how what you show how you show it 
yeah. and why? So I'm going to build on his question too, because it's, um, I think a lot of people are going to be, are intimidated by the idea of purchasing a stats program because they assume it's something that's only for um, high level players or, you know, P, whether it's PJ tour pros or um, yeah, know, good, point, good junior. Yeah. So I, so I, and I, I've used the platform on Mike Matthew. I've used it a lot. Um, so building on his question, but how you guys have tailored it. Cause I know a little bit, but how you guys have tailored it so that it's um, something where, you know, your 15 handicapper could, could purchase it and still, you know, make sense of the information being provided. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's, uh, you, you bring up good, good points. Um, in terms of any sort of output when there's lots of variables, it's, uh, there's, there's definitely a risk that it turns into being a bit overwhelmed. Uh, it's similar to using a track man for the first time you get all kinds of data points and you don't really know what to do with it. So, uh, but in general, uh, why you would use it, it's uh, uh, we have users that are quite high handicappers, but the, but the common denominator would be if you're really interested in getting better, uh, because if you are, then you have to measure these things. It's, uh, it's sort of similar to being in a sales organization in a company. A person that does sales doesn't say, well, I'm just going to sell until it feels good. Uh, you have... A quota, right? And if you're not on the way to filling that quota, then you have some sort of talk with your superior where you go, what can we do to change? How's your process? And that sort of feedback is very tangible. And in terms of golf, getting better is sort of like that. Even if you as a player don't uh, take that responsibility, giving the coach the ability to be able to follow and track this progress makes the improvement cycle a lot more efficient. And ultimately, it comes down to what your um, goals are as a golfer, because it's perfectly fine to play golf for fun, right? To go out, enjoy hitting golf shots and stuff. But that's very different than systematically trying to become as good as you can possibly be. Um, and our platform is one way in which you can measure your progress uh, in, yeah, 700 different data types. So... Um, yeah, but coming back to how, how to use it, there's, uh, there's definitely um, a bit of a learning process to go from using the things you're used to checking out, like perhaps it's more of these traditional golf stats, to changing your process and the way you're thinking about your performance. I th um, I'm sure you've looked into this. This might be off topic you were going to go with that next question but it just came to my mind as a selfish plug as well for the book here hey Ramel come do, could you do me a favor you grab expert golfer from up there thanks um you you, you mentioned the uh the like the uh, the improvement cycle um, so looking at it from a self-regulatory perspective a player and anyone on the road to developing expertise they go through these cycles don't they we all know that the recording and the regulation aspect that comes after practicing or performance is so important. In fact, could be deemed more important than um, the practice, the activity of the practice itself in some respects. Um, that's just how important it is knowing, um, you know, you, you, your performance from this data point was this, your performance from this data point was this, and then just having that information to be able to then plan going back into that what you would call the four or what we would call based off of Anders Ericsson's work that forethought phase of planning goal setting and such and I think so for so long no one's really got this regulation aspect down have they everyone's talked about it oh you need to record your stats keep track of this keep track of this well no one ever does it, right? Because it's always seemed like so much effort, so much hard work, so much work. Coaches don't do it. They're giving 10 lessons back to back. Are they ever going to do that? No. And then there's been a few platforms come out to help coaches with that. But I guess yours is the epitome of, of regulation designed itself, that, right? Yeah. It's designed strictly for that reason. Um, do you have many struggles with getting people to use it uh, coaches to use it or to buy into this because 
there's a lot of people that have failed with with this, with this year. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people that have failed trying to do what you're doing. How do you get people to buy in? And can you tell me a little bit more about that part of it? Yep. Um, great to hear. And I know you guys are fans of Anders Ericsson. I'm also a fan and I've followed his work for a long time. And I especially like the way he talks about uh, the common denominators for experts in all fields. And you you made it a four-step process the way you were talking about it. And you, you, you could also slightly... Uh, simplify it and say you just start at your current performance level and then you look at how good are people at the next performance level and then you figure out how to go from where you are now to where you want to be like that's uh, uh, the improvement cycle that is that is really cool uh, but yes in terms of um, buying in and doing something different from what you're used to that's always uncomfortable it's pretty similar to uh, watch or working on your swing. It is uncomfortable to work on your swing. It's a lot easier to just do what you've always done. Uh, and that's why getting better at something, at anything, golf included, is difficult, right? It is a process. You, you, beat, you hit the head against the wall time and time again until you finally break through and then you're at that next performance level, at which point you pick another new target performance level and you just do it over again. Uh, and there's always um, a bit of hesitation with people to try to do this, right? Because you get out of your comfort zone. But getting better includes doing that over and over and over again. And what we're trying to do is uh, help players get the information they need to do this. But uh, as, as with any platform, we, we could always improve uh, having somebody start out and not get overwhelmed with lots of numbers because our our platform is quite numbers heavy. So it, but but that also by design because if you know what to look for, you can really be detailed in in a lot of different different very cool variables that are super specific. So, um, but yeah, um, it's a similar um, challenge as to what any swing coach or golf coach would have in trying to convince somebody to take what they have been doing and adjust it to be doing something else. I, 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 sorry, I'm jumping in for you. So, because I, I've had feedback on this part of what we preach here at Game Light Training, and we've had many discussions for a long time, but in this book, Selfish Plug, my own, yeah expert golfer um we talk about in chapter three we talk about regulating and you know we we go over how important it is and we share some of ericsson's work um with the self-regulation model forethought phase performance phase self-reflection phase and we can we can basically if someone just read this chapter they'd buy in understanding wow it's super this part of it is super important like your platform, your program, your company fits in right here in chapter three, right? Well, and that's, self-regulation. Let's break yeah. down some of those barriers. I mean, it's, and that's kind of the purpose to the to the podcast is we want to educate people on you know what your product does and and whatnot. And and I know you guys have three different kind of levels that you can uh, pay for. Um, so I think that'd be a good thing to to just kind of plug would be the different levels because I know you get different amounts of data. Um, within each yep. level um, and then how long does it take as well to typically enter in you know around a golf with stats because if oh yeah they're the things that get people out right exactly What's the cost yeah to start with so yeah the the manual adding of rounds is always going to be a hurdle uh but that's actually by design and in that sense we're a very uh, analog digital company right it's an app we're in the cloud but we don't use any um any actual sensors on the clubs. Uh, we look at it from this perspective that performance at the highest level requires a uh, full focus on that performance. And we never want that to get in the way of, um, or we never want the collection of stats to get in the way of you performing at the utmost of your ability. So in that sense, we typically recommend you to do this afterwards. Uh, instead of bothering and having your phone out, because that is a distraction in if you're really looking to perform at the highest of your ability. So in that sense, uh, we're really encouraging players to use this as a part of their reflective process after a round, 
which is inherently a very good thing that you need to do after each round in order to evaluate what you did well, what you did uh, not so well, and what you can do to improve, right? It's a part of this process. But in terms of adding a round, the actual add a round process can be done in five minutes. But what we end up seeing is that half of the uh, players have a difficult time remembering their shots, and half of the players can remember shots they hit from two months ago in vivid detail, uh, and they don't see eye to eye. So if you have to think for a minute about what number 14 was, what I don't even remember the, what hole number 14 looked like, then all of a sudden you're looking at an hour, right, to enter uh, empty around. So we have a few vari variations of scorecards that are pretty easy, but in general, all, all we really need is the distance you have to the hole and the resulting lie. So those two data points are things that most tournament golfers are already right. writing down in their yardage book, or they have a laser, or they're pacing off from a sprinkler head, right? So it's, it's not by itself a lot of extra information needed. Um, there's a point there for yeah, the, the, the. There's a point there as well. There's an, an opportunity to educate the golfer as well. That if you can't remember, then maybe you need to like try, because the, you know becoming an expert. The, the the whole part of it is that experts create much more accurate representations, mental representations of what they're doing or what they've previously yeah. done. You ask Tiger Woods what he did <laughs> ten years ago on sixteen. <laughs> he will tell you how he felt, what he looked at. Wind, the club. He'll tell you yeah. everything. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. one of the things. Experts are, can more accurately recall what happened. You know, there's the and the best research came from um, from something with Jack Nicholas, Anders Ericsson and Jack Nicholas, uh, Anders and his team of researchers. Yeah. Ericsson found that Nicholas, that I might this don't take this word for word, but it's pretty close, right? That uh, Nicholas could recall being away from the environment where he performed. He could recall on a particular hole how many people were stood behind the green in the distance, how many trees were behind the green, and approximately guess the distance that there were trees or bushes behind the green. He could guess a pretty, in pretty close proximity to how far away from the green them bushes were, where the green was, how high the, like the elevation. He could recall all of it in very, very <laughs> vivid detail. So... You know, that that's my thing with golfers when I'm saying, well, what was 15 like? And they're like, uh, well, okay, I'll wait for you because you need to try and remember because it's actually beneficial for the improvement of your performance, not just getting the accurate data in this yeah. app. Yeah. Andreas, Andreas Ericsson has some really cool parts uh, in his work about chess players also remembering uh, games and all kinds of different combinations of moves, right? Or the ones that play without looking at the chessboard, right? So that that is involving a uh, a very detailed understanding and presence in the task that they're trying to do, and that is inherently good uh, in our opinion as well. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's the thing I found is just like with anything, you know, the first time I have players entering stats, it might take them thirty minutes at first. Um, but then after that, it just becomes such a quick thing. Like you said, they do it after the tournament and even, you know, your average golfer, your 15, 20 handicapper, like, what do they do after they finish around the golf? They usually go into the, to the bar and have talk a drink. Yeah. Yeah. They go into the <laughs> bar and they talk about their round with their friends. We'll take five minutes and enter in your stats. And like yes. you, you know, and you said this earlier. While you have beer and foods on the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, you don't. Yeah. Uh, although it, I mean, it does require a bit of, uh, um, focus right because this is a part of your improvement process so what we are seeing is that not necessarily handicap related but more in terms of how serious people are in their quest to get better uh there's more and more resistance to uh thinking about this stuff uh and that's probably what is expected uh if you're not really into spending the time to get better then uh this is going to be a hurdle that is not super fun because nobody in the history of golf has ever liked manually inputting the rounds into any platform, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the conversation that you can have and then the hours you spend practicing that you can then be more effective at, that's the cool part. Uh, the conversation, yeah. the analysis, the feeling of getting better, uh, that's like the get feeling of getting better is the, best feeling that I can remember from playing golf for, for years at, at, a, at a reasonably high level. 
uh, more than the actual really good performance it's the practice feeling that you've broken through to a new level that's super awesome yeah and i I guess the point i just want to get across to anybody listening is you know it doesn't matter what handicap you are it it does like you said it comes down to the motivation if you truly want to get better then you know there are well there's many ways you can use anova you know to to get the value out of it and you don't have to be a numbers person you know i i have students who um I just get a notification when they upload their round and then I look at it and then we talk about it the next time. And I ask them if they looked at it and they say, Oh, I tried. I didn't really know what I was looking at though. And I'm like, that's fine. That's not, it's not necessarily for them. Some, I do have some students that love it. Um, and then I have others that don't, but I think from a coach's perspective, if you have a student that comes to you and you know, your first time you've met them and you're asking them about their goals and what they're trying to do, if they say they want to, I really want to get better. I want to commit to this. If you say, okay, cool here, sign up for this stats program. Well, if they sign up for it or not, that's kind of going to tell you if their motivation is actually in the right direction or not. Because I think that is a barrier for some people. But it also helps as a coach. If you do get people signing up for this first stats program, then, you know, it's helping you know, okay, this person is serious. This person does want to get better. Now I can actually really help them. And that's the best part about your guys' program is I've, I can use it to compare, you know, from – uh, for that player from beginning of the season to the end of the season, or I can do it to um, like, we have a, a senior in high school right now that we work with who wants to drop his handicap down to um, a plus one. And so I can actually compare to that handicap range within your guys's program. He can get a better idea of what it takes to, to perform at that level that he wants to be at. It's not, you know, you're not just being compared to somebody on the PGA tour. You can compare it to somewhere that you want to go realistically at the level you currently are. I think that's that's one of my favorite aspects about your guys' yeah. software. You can use Anova, you know, from from any skill level if the motivation's in the right place. Um, yeah. Uh, so exactly, um, the the idea is that in order for a player to be motivated or as motivated as you can possibly be, you would need a target performance level that you can relate to. So if you're a freshman in high school or freshman in college, looking at the looking at the tour might be interesting, but it, it's really too far away. The, the key is to find something where each player can be really thrilled and motivated about. So for example, in college, it could be, if you're number seven, you're not gonna go to any tournament. So the most motivating thing for that player might be, what do I need to do to be in the top five? So you want to find that target performance level. Uh, for our for our college teams that we work with, these players can compare themselves to the number five guy or girl on the team to see exactly where their performance falls in relation to them. Uh, they can also compare it to other players in their conference or in their in their in in college golf. But in general, the more you need to pick a, the next immediate target performance level that is as much as motivating as possible for you. And that sort of goes to the point where we we're saying before about, the improvement cycle. Um, before you go from being a, a college player to tour player, it might be 15 target performance levels that you keep climbing until you get there. Uh, and they have to sort of be in in somewhat of a of the right order because you don't very few people go from freshman in college to best in the world. So uh, yeah. we want to be there to help you um, help you have those conversations with your coaches and and find those target performance levels so you can make that make those climbs in performance awesome well i buy in (laughs) Uh, what's the uh tell us what the packages are and prices for the program yep so we uh we have three three different prices or three different packages so uh the middle tier one is the pro plan it's uh uh, Nineteen dollars a month uh, when you uh, when you buy a yearly plan. It has four hundred and fifty different stats, and for most people, this will be enough. Four hundred and fifty is a lot. Uh, it um, breaks things down in quite a level of detail that takes a f- takes quite a few rounds to get to. For example, what is your average score from uh, a bunker from seventy five to hundred yards? It takes quite a few rounds until you have enough. Uh, shots in there for it to be statistically significant Uh, but it is able to break down your game so that you can see what was my strokes gain from 125 to 175 yards what was it from 15 to 20 feet 
all those sort of things. So you can have a lot of very interesting conversations with your coaches. Our starter plan is the intro plan and is uh, probably good when you're just starting out and building your database. Uh, it still gives you 70, 70 variables, a good combination of the uh, general strokes gain categories like off the tee, approach to green, et cetera. Um, and then our tour pro plan has 700 different variables. And then we're starting to look into uh, what is your strokes gain from uh, 125 to 150 yards from the rough? Now, when you break it down by 25 yard distance bracket and lie, then it, it, you really filter away a lot, of, uh, a lot of shots. So it takes quite a big sample size for you to be able to look at that specific a target and know that it's a general, uh, a general look at your performance level from that distance. So a good place to start would be on one of the, uh, on the pro plan or the, or the starter plan. And then once you have 20, 30, 40 rounds and you're really into seeing in, in that level of specificity, then uh, we'd be happy to talk about upgrading. But in general, um, we'd be thrilled if, players chose us as the platform, but in, but in general, the important part is that you just measure your performance so you can have something to talk to your coaches about. Uh, yeah, like I said, we would be thrilled if, if we were that platform for a player, but ultimately it's about finding a good fit for everyone so that the player actually commits to it and, and, and does it. So we have a, a free 30 day trial so everybody can try out, try out the platform and see if they like it. Um, if they like it, we'd we'd love to uh, love to keep keep working with players and coaches. But if not, then it's no hard feelings. And yeah, the ultimate thing is just to do this sort of improvement process uh, in order to get as good as you can possibly get. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Cool. Um, anything else, Matt? Are you... No, I'm good. I got. Cool. I, go. I need it. I think we might have to do another Thanks, podcast man. sometime because we can go pretty deep into the. Into Should the do platform. another one. Yeah. Like <laughs> and bring up a player. Like on the screen, show all the things you look at and talk about. It. That'd be a good yeah, one. almost like a case study. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> cool. Well, you used a magic word there that that I think I say every day um, when I'm teaching, but specificity, and that's ultimately if you want to improve, you have to get specific with with you know where you're putting time and energy, and how you're going about practicing. That's hence the name of our company, Game Like Training. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's been a nice. Um, I've loved using your guys' platform and, and I've, I'm going to enjoy continuing to use it in, in the future. So um, I'm going to give you a, a last chance to kind of plug anything that you want to. Um, how can people get in contact with you if they're interested in, you know, checking out that free 30 day trial um, or if they want to just go ahead and pull the trigger. Hopefully we get some people to, to you know, uh, to commit to getting his stats program. So, so um, what's your guys, social media channels, all that kind of stuff. Yep. So we're uh, Anova Golf at Twitter, Instagram, um, and uh, you can find us at anova.golf on the web. Um, you can also find us on the App Store. We have an app. Uh, you need to sign up on the website, and then our iPhone app is a companion app. And uh, and yeah, the uh, thirty day trial is a is is a is a free trial. No credit card is asked for at sign up. So it's a it's a Try it out, see if you like it. Uh, we'd we'd love to help you along the way of getting this process started, and uh, yeah, we'd love to connect you to some of the super high performing coaches that we work with as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're just passionate about trying to uh, become as good a golfers as we can possibly get. Uh, so yeah, we're super we're super excited. Awesome, thanks. And if anybody wants to reach out to you personally, Thomas, um, you know, do you feel want to share your email address yeah. absolutely yeah okay. so feel free to contact me at thomas at anova.golf if you have any questions we'd love to we'd love to hear from you beautiful awesome cool well uh thomas thanks again for joining us um enjoyed the conversation anybody to keep up to date with us um and the show make sure you subscribe to our mailing list you can go to the website uh, gltgolf.com um, and you can in the top right corner there's a subscribe button so you can subscribe to get the uh, weekly mail out so the email it has, works now so it works, it works it so you is, can go ahead and sign up you can do it because <laughs> then you'll get email blasts which will have kind of uh, the latest podcasts on there um, it'll also have any other videos or educational resources that we've just released so make sure you do that uh, give us a follow on SoundCloud. Uh, check us out on social media. We are on Twitter, GLT Golf, Instagram, Game L Training, and then Facebook and YouTube. 
at Game Like Train Golf. So make sure you check us out. Um, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Thank you.